And here is the Writer's Almanac for Thursday. It's the 18th of March, 2021. It's the birthday of John Updike, born Reading, Pennsylvania, 1932. Father, high school teacher, his mother wanted to be a writer. Updike said, one of my earliest memories is of seeing her at her desk. I admired the typewriter, eraser, the boxes of clean paper, and I remember the brown envelopes that stories would go off in and come back in. He went to Harvard. He joined the staff of the Harvard Lampoon as a cartoonist, but ended up writing as well, got an art scholarship, studied at Oxford, but came back to America to be a staff writer at the New Yorker magazine. He published his first books when he was just 25, a book of poems and a book of short stories, The Same Door, and a novel, The Poor House Fair. He was married with small children, didn't care to live in New York City, moved up to Massachusetts to Ipswich, and had great success in his early years. In 1960, he published Rabbit Run, the first of his Rabbit Angstrom quadrology, and at the same time underwent a spiritual crisis, he said, when his spirit could scarcely breathe. He said, to give myself brightness and air, I read Karl Barth and fell in love with other men's wives. He wrote in an office above a restaurant in Ipswich. He wrote about three pages every morning after breakfast, sometimes more, published about one book a year, took Sundays off for church, published more than 60 books in his lifetime, including 28 novels. Updike said, at the point where you get your writerly vocation, you diminish your receptivity to experience. Being able to write becomes a kind of shield, a way of hiding, a way of too instantly transforming pain into honey. Here's a poem by Marjorie Caesar, My Old Aunts Play Canasta in a Snowstorm. I ride along in the back seat. The aunt who can drive picks up each sister at her door, keeps the Pontiac chugging in each driveway, while one or the other slips into her overshoes and steps out, closing her door with a click, the wind lifting the fringe of her white cotton scarf as she comes down the sidewalk, still pulling on her new polyester Christmas stocking mittens. We have no business to be out in such a storm, she says, no business at all. The wind takes her voice and swirls it like snow across the windshield. We're on to the next house, the next aunt, the heater blowing to beat the band. At the last house, we play canasta. The deuce is wild even as they were in childhood, the wind blowing through the empty apple trees, through the shadows of bumper crops. The cards line up under my aunt's finger bones, eights and nines and aces straggle and fall into place like well-behaved children. My aunts shuffle and meld. They laugh like banshees, as they did in that other kitchen in the thirties. That day, Margaret draped a dish towel over her face to answer the door. We put her up to it, they say, laughing. We pushed her. The man, whoever he was, drove off in a huff while they laughed till they hiccuped, laughing still. I'm one of the girls, laughing him down the sidewalk and into his car. We're rascals, sure as farmyard dogs. We're wild card players. The snow thickens, the coffee boils and perks. The wind is a red tray because, as one of the others says, we are getting up there in the years. We'll have to quit sometime, but today, today, deal, sister, deal. A poem, My Old Aunts Play Canasta in a Snowstorm by Marjorie Caesar, from her collection Lost in Seward County, published by the Backwaters Press and used by permission here on the Writer's Almanac, funded by donations from listeners like you. Be well, do good work, and keep in touch. <laughs>